Welcome to another video from Lane Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy, where our goal is to help you become a better Splunk analyst. Uh, today's goal is to help you create your own behavioral-based analysis at, on your Splunk instance. We're probably familiar with signature-based. That's the concept uh, that you're going to have a certain rule set, like an IDS rule, and if it hits those rules, it's going to fire an alert. But taking another, a different approach is to look at behavioral, look for different behaviors on your network. The problem is these analytics are not nearly as easy because they need you to understand your own network. The behaviors on, what ne on one network might be different than another. And so here is we're going to try to start uh, giving you some ideas of how you can create your own behavioral an analytics on your own Splunk instance. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to look at my logs here. I'm going to just grab the last 15 minutes of logs for this particular IP address. And from there, we can get sources and destinations and packet sizes and ports and history. And what we're going to do is we're just going to look for something really simple. Is this IP address reaching out to someone, talking to something that it hasn't talked to before? So let, to frame that question, first thing we need to know is we need to know who it's talking to. So we can just do a stats count by dest IP. And over the last 15 minutes, we can see that it's talking to these IP addresses. Now, the real question is, are these IP addresses new or not? Or has it always been talking to these? If I look over X period of time, will it be, will it find that it's been talking to those devices? Or are these new communications that it's set up and talking to? So, one of the ways, let's try to figure that out. What we're going to do is we're going to come here and use the earliest command. And what this is going to do is it's going to go grab all the logs and it's going to grab me the epoch time that the very first this IP to this IP occurred in this 15 minute window. And so if we had a timeline, um, the, most of my logs are going to occur further left. What we're looking for on time, if time is starts on the left and moves to the right as we progress forward, where any new communications would be on the right side and all of the old communications, things that we've seen at least pr during the time span would be left. Basically the concept is when was the first time in my time span that that communication pair occurred? And so we can see that. So now what we need to do is see if it's new. And we need to define new as so many, in like this case, so many minutes ago or if it looks day, if we look at a year, so many, like today, was this a new communication day over the last year? But in order to do that, we need to get, we need Splunk to be able to make some comparisons. So we need to give it some time to, we need to give it a time value. And what we're going to do is we're going to say um, current time equals now. And what I've done is I've just grabbed, I've got myself, this is the current epoch time when this query ran. And what we want to do is, so five minutes is 60 seconds times five or 300. And so we're just going to do a where clause where first scene is less than current time minus 90. That should be something that basically the concept here is saying, hey, if the first scene date is basically take today's what the very current time minus 90 that's going to be six sorry that's going to yeah that's good that's only going to be a minute and a half 900 would be well i can't even do that so five minutes would be five times 60 which is 300. so this is going to look back five minutes so basically 10 minutes of it if it happened in the first 10 minutes that's considered normal if it's occurred in the, the very first time it was seen was in the last five minutes, that's considered abnormal. And that's the only things that are going to come back. Most likely, I'm going to get no results. This is going to identify where first scene is less than current time minus three seconds. We're going to, I, I want to keep it really small. The concept is, for, remember, time gets bigger as each second ticks by. And so if first scene is less than the current time minus three, the fields are going to show up. And I should get all of them back. Why? Because all these events didn't occur within the last three seconds. What I'm looking for is these are all, this is my normal 
traffic. This is what I've determined is normal. So if I want to say that 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes of my traffic is normal and the last five minutes is abnormal, this current minus 300 will give me everything that the first seen date occurs in the first 10 minutes, which probably is everything. But on the inverse, if I flip this to greater than, now I'm going to be looking on the other side of the equation, and that's where the first scene occurred within the last five minutes of this 15-minute window. And I get no results. Cool. That's kind of what was expected. What if we, ex uh, what we want to do is now open this window up. We're going to now go look at the last 60 minutes. We're still going to only get the same traffic because it, you open this window up, you're not going to get more results because of the way the numbers. You're not. You didn't have any new. If you didn't have any new values in a five-minute window during 15 minutes, you're not going to have something during 60, during 90 because that left side window just keeps getting bigger. You're only going to shrink what's on the right-hand side, but what we can do is we can expand this out. And so we're going to look at the last 60 minutes, but instead we're going to look at what popped up new in the last 15 of it. So we got 15 times 60, which is 900. And so I'm going to look at during the last 60 minutes, 45 minutes of that will be on the left-hand side. That's the normal. And what's on the right-hand side will be the new. Are there anything new? Still nothing, so what we can do, let's just expand this, just to prove what is 59 minutes. 59 minutes times 60. That would be 3540. Now I've really extended out my right-hand side, but my left-hand side is itty-bitty, so I'm going to look at this 60-minute window and the first minute of that 60 minutes is my baseline, and the 3540 is the new stuff. Do I have any new traffic? I would imagine it all fits in there. Oh, wow. Okay, so one of them occurred in that first minute. The rest of them are all pretty new. And what a surprise. If you remember the numbers, it's probably the thing that hits all the time. Anyway, and so we can just keep playing with this window. And you can go, one of the things I like to do is I'm not going to run it here. Um, I'll stop it before I run. I'll go run, say, the last 90 days, and then I'll do stop the query, stop, and go look at the last 86,400. 86,400 is the time for one day. And so I can actually run this query, and it's going to look at the last 90 days worth of traffic, everything that's from day 0 to day 89 is considered normal. And then it's going to look, what is a new connection in the last 24 hours? And that's what this is doing. This is what's going to pop up here. These are my new connections to IP addresses external. Now, I, I, they happen to be external. And that's not a surprise. Internal would surprise me a lot more because they've, over a given period of time, I'm going to talk to all my IP addresses. But going out to the internet, you're going to find a little bit different. All right, let's give another example of this. So I'm going to come over here, and what I've done now is the exact same principle, but instead of putting an IP address in there, I just flat out I just went with destination and source IP. So I'm looking for any old connection. Doesn't matter. Same principle, though. Current time equals now. And I'm going to just do a, I don't need this field. And I'm just going to do where first time is greater than current time minus 86,400. This would look at the last uh, seven days. I could flip it to 90 days, et cetera. Now I'm just going to look at all traffic doing that very same thing, not just a specific one, all of it. I could flip this. What if I want to go look at... Let's go grab this log again. We're going to go look at its first 100 values. What if I want to know if I'm looking at um, pro? Uh, sure, we could go look at um, ports. 
that it's talking to. So we would be looking at desk port. So we could go stats. Now we just put the whole thing back in. Instead of looking at by desk IP, we'd be looking at desk port. And it's going to tell me any new destination ports it's talked to in the last day versus the last 90. And none. And I doubt, I bet if this runs, it's not going to come up with anything new. But that's OK. That's The principle is really simple. I could do bytes in. That's going to be really random. That's going to probably give you a lot of false positives. But if you're very consistent and all of a sudden you have a big spike, you could do something like that. Uh, I wouldn't. But uh, so you could do ports. You could do history filled. You just grab any old log. I'm going to go switch. I'm going to change source types. We're going to stop this. And I'm going to go read the Coralite. I'm going to look at my HTTP traffic. I could do pairings there by source and desk. I could do by methods. I could do by uh, status codes, um, trans depth, uh, hosts, anything like this. So I could just go look through all my logs, and I can just keep building anomaly detection using this very template. Grab the earliest time. Group it by whatever you want to search for, what you're looking for, the unique pairs. Do a current time equals now, and then just look for where first time is greater than current time, minus your right-hand side you want to do. Anyway, I hope this helps. I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. And if this was useful, like and subscribe to the channel, and we hope that you'll keep coming back and watching more videos.